Periscope, what's up, Greg? How's it is? Thursday morning. Thursday. Let's get the day off to a good start. High energy, let's go. Shaniqua, Michigan, Spartan country, let's go. For some, it's Wolverine country, I guess. Washington State, Kentucky, good morning. Bridget of Richton Park, good morning, good morning. You love how I say your name, okay. <laughs> ah, Gloria from Mississippi, good morning. Mississippi. Los Angeles, my hometown. Come on now. L.A. is in the house. Let's go. Angel, good morning. What it do, Jonathan? Monica, Mississippi, good morning. Yeah, it's June. It is June. Can you believe it? June 1st. Charlotte, good morning. Charlotte, North Carolina. New Jersey, Pennsylvania, good morning. Macon, Georgia. Lansing, Michigan. Val, good morning. Early, good morning, good morning. Got the coffee going in Northwest Indiana. Come on now. That's what we want. We want the coffee. <laughs> Monica. Good morning, good morning. Y'all talking to each other. Louisiana, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Starbucks, okay. I'm gonna be waiting in line a bit. Okay. Love you guys. High energy, let's go. Thank you for the hearts. Thanks for inviting people to come on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love you too. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Greg Howes. This is Leader Scope. Welcome. I'm glad you're on with me this morning. Let's get the day off to a good start. Uh, probably be a little bit more brief than I usually am, so I got I to gotta get moving this morning. You know how that is. So uh, we'll see what we can make happen here in a few minutes. Raleigh, uh, good morning. Cinnamon Dole, how do you say that? Dolce? Dolce coffee? Mmm, cinnamon. Ugh, I don't know. I don't think I want cinnamon in my coffee, but God bless you. <laughs> God bless you to each their own. Um, I'm, I've recently been finishing up my, my work on my master's degree, and uh, the paper I was writing at the finish of my master's program uh, was concerning city transformation, how to transform neighborhoods, communities, cities, and so forth. And... Um, as I was writing, I was emphasizing three things that I think are very, very valuable when you're thinking about city transformation. So these three things are, number one, uh, training young people in how to get prepared for politics. So we're raising up the next generation of political leaders at a young age. One of the big complaints about this last presidential election was that we did not have anybody to choose from. We didn't have any really good leaders that we could choose for, from to vote for a president or who would run for the presidential office. Uh, so I was already working on this, but it just became even more important that we need to be raising up our young people. I'm speaking of junior high, high school students starting at that age level and get them ready to run for political office so that in the next 10 to 20 years, we have these young, kingdom-minded, spirit-filled people 
that are coming into politics, running for political office, so that we can begin to influence the political process with kingdom thinking, with kingdom ideas. So I think that's important. Secondly was the creative arts. I, I think creative arts can be used by God to actually bring about transformation in a community. The creative arts can involve young people, can involve children, can involve the millennials. Uh, the creative arts can uh, bring hope, can ins uh, bring inspiration, can bring motivation into a community of people. And so I think the creative arts can be very useful in bringing about aspects of transformation within a city. We can use the arts including music, dance, including actual art, painting type of art. Uh, uh, we can use all of these different facets and forms, spoken word, poetry. We can use all of these facets of the creative arts, the performing arts, in order to bring about a change in our community for the good. The third area was in entrepreneurship. And I think this is the one that can... Um, immediately have an impact on our cities. If we can raise up entrepreneurs out of the church, kingdom-minded entrepreneurs who have a heart to give, who have a heart to share with the community, those kingdom-minded entrepreneurs can actually begin to impact and affect a change in the community almost immediately. When entrepreneurs begin their businesses, they are, they are already in contact with the political sector, uh, they're in contact usually with the educational sector, the school system. They're in contact with the community. And as their business gets rolling, then they're able to create more jobs for the community, more job opportunities. As the business increases and prospers, then their, their pay level can begin to rise so that people are being blessed uh, that work for that uh, particular business. As that business begins to impact the community, it can grow, it can expand, it can start other businesses, and then entrepreneurs, other entrepreneurs get inspired, they get motivated, and they start doing some things. And before you know it, it's not going to take too much time. Before you know it, that entrepreneurship piece, that business piece can begin to transform a city. So that's how I was writing my paper. Now this morning, I came across uh, a man named Mark DeMaze. His last name is spelled D-E capital Y M-A-Z. Mark DeMaze. D-E capital D-E capital Y M-A-Z. He is the leader of the Mosaic Church in the state of Arkansas. Now I'm, I'm familiar with Erwin McManus and Mosaic in Los Angeles. Uh, somebody's on here from LA, you might be familiar with, with McManus as well. And Mosaic Church is, is very uh, creative, very open in the way they express the gospel, having church services in nightclubs and restaurants and, and this and that, uh, theaters, that kind of thing. Uh, so Mark DeMaze is part of the Mosaic Church in the state of Arkansas. I didn't even know they were in Arkansas, but apparently they are. And he has written a book called Disruption. The book is called Disruption. And so I was reading this piece about him and I was listening to a podcast that he was being interviewed on. And so he's talking about his mindset of how the church should be impacting the culture. And, and one of the things that he presented was this concept that the church should inform the culture rather than the culture informing the church. And I fully agree with that concept. I fully agree with that concept. But the problem is the church is not informing the culture and the culture is not listening to the church the culture is not paying any attention to the church. The culture is not looking to the church for any type of leadership because we as the church have not provided that. We haven't provided that. And so um, as you're looking at what's going on in the culture, the culture seems to be demanding and pointing out to us that there is a need not only for spiritual change, spiritual transformation, which we should be all about. But it doesn't stop there. There's also a need to bring transformation along the lines of justice and transformation along the lines of economic redemption. 
The culture is crying out for these answers, for these solutions. So it takes us to the Bible in Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8 says, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? Three things. Number one, here's what the Lord requires. To do justly. So we're to be involved with justice. Secondly, to love mercy. To love mercy. So we're to be somehow involved with being merciful to people. And thirdly, number three, to walk humbly with your God. To walk humbly with your God. These are the three things that God requires of us according to Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. To do justice, to do justice, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before God. So, in, in this interview that I heard with Mark DeMaze, he was saying if the church is going to get ahead of the culture, if we're somehow going to find a way to get ahead of the culture and be heard and respected in the culture, we can no longer simply play only a spiritual role and limit it to that. Like we're playing games in our spiritual sandbox. It's got to go beyond that. We also have to get involved in the justice space and we have to get involved in the economic space in our local communities. So that when we're dealing with our local communities, with our cities, with our towns, it's not just about political correctness, but we are now pushing biblical correctness. And biblical correctness, and we could also say kingdom correctness, is, is always addressing every form of injustice. Biblical correctness is going to uh, address every form of oppression wherever it is found. And biblical, uh, biblical correctness is going to address economic opportunity, economic strength, economic power in a city. The church, the people of God need to be touching that economic sector. We need to be involved in that economic sector. Yes, kingdom correctness, biblical correctness, and not just political correctness. Mark DeMays points out, as he was talking this morning, he was pointing out that uh, the African-American church in America, particularly the African-American church in the urban centers of our cities, have not only operated in the dispersion of spiritual truth, but they have also been involved in spreading the truth about justice, about economic transformation, about social issues, and the white church, by and large, is behind in all of that. And the white church needs to take some action to get engaged and catch up with what's happening in the culture. The black church has been involved with that for years. You go all the way back to the uh, civil rights movement and Martin Luther King Jr. and several of the other leaders that were involved with Martin Luther King Jr., they were preachers. They were not politicians. They were preachers of the gospel. And they were vitally, essentially engaged in social justice and, and the civil rights movement and, and addressing areas of oppression and injustice in the land. And that's exactly where we need to be today. We need to be right there today in the church. So we have some of us who are all about the gospel. And sometimes we want to look at ourselves. It's everything gospel, gospel, gospel. You got to preach the gospel. And we need to look at that and, and ask the question, okay, that's great. Let's preach the gospel, but where is the justice? Where is the justice in our gospel? And then you have other types in the church that are nothing but justice, justice, justice. Everything is about social issues. And, and you want to look at that and you want to ask the question, okay, that's great, but where is the Jesus? Where is Jesus in all of that? Where is Jesus? And so there, there needs to be this, 
this, I guess you could say, a balance, a balance between preaching the gospel and social justice, addressing injustice, addressing oppression, addressing, econ addressing economic issues. And maybe it's not a balance. Maybe that's the way it should be. Maybe that's all part of the gospel, and we've been neglecting it. So we've got to get involved with reconciliation. We have to get involved with repentance, and not just individual repentance, but corporate repentance. And we have to get involved with justice. These things are not peripheral to the gospel, but these things are intrinsic to the gospel. These things are a part of the good news. So it's like a three-legged stool. The three legs are spiritual power, spiritual truth, Number two, social justice. And then number three, financial fronts, the financial freedom area, the financial economic strength area. Those are the things the church must be addressing. So if we're not dealing with injustice or oppression or the economic issues of the time, then we are actually undermining the gospel. We are undermining the authority and the power of the gospel that wants to reach into those various sectors of the culture. So here's the deal. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Jesus said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. What a powerful word from Jesus. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works, that they may see your good works, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus did not say, let them hear your good theology. Jesus did not say, let them see your big church full of people who look just like you. He did not say that. He did not say, let them hear your good words. He did say, let them see your good works. Let them see your good works. Because when we get engaged in the culture, and we begin to do the work of the Lord in the culture, involving spiritual truth and power, but also involving injustice, and also involving economic uh, lack and poverty, when we start addressing those things, when we start moving into those areas with our good works being engaged, not just with our words, but with our works, then we are shining a light on who God is. We're shining a light on how God loves people, and we're shining a light on what God does, how he moves in our cities. People don't need words so much. They need to see the works. They need to see the work. Actually, we need both. We do need words, but we, we need more than ever. We need works. We need people doing the good works of our Heavenly Father. And if we do that, we'll be able to redeem our communities. We'll be able to redeem the abandoned, vacant properties that we see all over our neighborhoods. We'll be able to help people get their GEDs, pursue their college degrees. We'll be able to inspire them and motivate them and all of that. We'll be able to raise up the next generation of political leaders. We'll be able to raise up the next generation of creative arts performers and artists. We'll be able to raise up the entrepreneurs, the business people that are going to change the, this, the face of our cities. And it will be a powerful thing. Along with all of that, we can do our church planting and our church leaders. We can do all of that. We can do all of it, and we can actually transform the community. Yeah, amen. Well, check out that book. It's called Disruption. I just got it. Uh, you can find it in your Amazon books. Disruption by Mark DeMaze, capital D-E, capital Y-M-A-Z, Disruption. Check it out and see if it speaks to you. All right? Amen. 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 Well, thanks for being on with me today. I appreciate it. I love you. I'm grateful for you. I hope you have a wonderful day. You have open doors in front of you. You have opportunities awaiting you. You have divine connections, divine resources. You have favor with God. And man, it's going to be a great day for you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'll talk to you soon.